Beekeeping in the United States is a large and sophisticated industry with several specializations. Most beekeepers specialize in producing honey, and the leading producing states are California, Minnesota, Florida, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Other beekeepers specialize in renting their colonies to pollinate fruits and vegetables. This is concentrated in Michigan, California, and New England. However, the vast majority of beekeepers are hobbyists and have rather small operations like the one we've started. All of these beekeepers have one need in common, and that's for bees. Most of us get our bees from package bee and queen producers, and these producers are a very large specialty in our industry. Georgia is one of the leading producing states of package bees and queens. In this part of the program, we're going to visit the apiary of Mr. Reg Wilbanks in Claxton, Georgia, and observe this operator's way of doing business. When you receive a package of bees in the mail like we did, it represents a complete young colony. It has a queen to lay eggs and several thousand workers to do the colony's work. If everything goes well, you will install the package in the hive. The workers will build comb and care for the queen, as she will lay eggs and produce more and more workers. The queen needs the workers, and the workers need the queen. However, the commercial methods of rearing queens and workers are completely different. Let's look at queen production first. And to do that, we must review a little bee biology. Eggs take three days to hatch into larvae, and any female egg has the potential to become either a worker or a queen, depending on the diet it receives as a larva. But this window of opportunity is very brief. The female must begin her royal jelly diet as a one-day-old larva, that is, the fourth day after egg-laying. If this is delayed until the second day, the resulting queen will be underdeveloped and inferior. In nature, when a colony loses its queen or wants to swarm, workers select several suitable young female larvae and feed them royal jelly. This triggers the development of functional ovaries and other queen-like characteristics. Queen cells are elongated and peanut-shaped. Newly emerged queens are hostile to each other. The first one to emerge often kills her sisters while they are still in their cells. If two emerge at the same time, they may fight to the death. After a few days, a new queen takes her mating flight and mates with about 10 or 12 drones. She stores their sperm in a special organ called the spermatheca and uses them to fertilize her eggs for the rest of her life. These facts form the basis of modern queen-rearing methods. To rear queens on a large scale, breeders create conditions which motivate workers to rear queens. First, they remove one-day-old female larvae from their natural cells and place them in artificial wax cups. This is called grafting. Next, they place the grafted larvae in queenless cell starter colonies. Because they are queenless, these workers eagerly feed the larvae royal jelly, and thus the transformation to queens begins. And finally, ripe queen cells are placed in miniature nucleus colonies, nukes for short, to let the queens emerge, mate, and begin laying eggs. But actually, queen rearing begins the previous year. Most breeders, like Reg Wilbanks, look for colonies that are gentle, productive, and disease and pest resistant. Reg earmarks the queens from these colonies as next year's grafting mothers. This is a breeder colony. Note the queen excluder that traps the queen on a certain comb. By changing this comb each day and labeling it, the breeder has absolute control over the age of all larvae on each comb. Remember, he can only graft larvae that are one day old. Here, a breeder pulls out a comb containing one day old larvae and takes it into the grafting house. With a hot knife, he cuts back the cells to get closer to the tiny larvae. These are special bars that hold 19 wax cups. Each cup is primed with a mixture of royal jelly and water. Priming improves the acceptance of grafted larvae. Next, using a special grafting tool, a larva is removed from its original cell and transferred into a wax cup. This 
modified frame holds 171 grafted wax cups. The cups are then placed in the cell starter colony. Cell starters are temporary queenless colonies. Reg makes them up new each graft with queenless five pound packages. Notice the jar of sugar syrup. Queen rearing demands a rich bounty of food. After 24 hours, the cups are removed from the cell starter colonies. The 24 hour old cups are next placed in cell finisher colonies. Two new bars go in and two finished bars come out. Notice how the nurse bees have started elongating the cells. Cell finishers do have their own queens, but they are restricted to the lower hive body with a queen excluder. If queen cells are kept in the top, away from the resident queen, workers go ahead and finish them. So, why have the cell starters and cell finishers? For one thing, it's good to use fresh new nurse bees to increase the acceptance rate of brand new grafts during their critical first day. You get this with newly made cell starters. If you relied solely on queenless cell builder colonies, you would have to constantly add brood to keep their populations up. That's one reason why cells are transferred to queen right cell finisher colonies. These colonies are basically self-maintaining. Plus, by using two types of cell builders, the workload is spread out more. Starters begin the process and finishers wrap it up. Reg stresses that he cannot overburden nurse bees. If he pushes a cell builder too hard, the nurse bees literally work themselves to death. After 10 days in a finisher, cells are removed and cut off the bar. It's important to not delay, or else queens will emerge and begin killing each other. Each cell must now be put in its own mating nuke. Nukes are miniature colonies with only a few hundred workers. Their sole function is to provide a place for the new queens to emerge, leave on her mating flights, return, and begin laying eggs. Nukes can be used over and over. A day or two before, the last queen was removed. So the workers are queenless and will eagerly accept the new queen cell. Notice the full-sized colonies in the background. These are drone colonies. These must be selected as carefully as the grafting mothers. By providing these colonies with drone foundation, Reg increases the output of drones from these colonies that can mate with queens from the nukes. About 12 to 14 days later, it's time to cage the queens. Looking for queens can be time consuming, especially if they run and hide inside the feeder. The queen is gently picked up and put in the cage. About seven workers are added to take care of the queen during transit. 